Almighty God who, in thy infinite wisdom and providential goodness, has appointed the officers of rulers and councils for the welfare of society and the just government of man. We beseech thee to behold with thy abundant favor us thy servants, whom thou hast been pleased to call to the performance of such important trust in the Commonwealth of Dominica. Let thy blessing descend upon us here in this parliament assembled, and grant that we may, as in thy presence, treat and consider all matters that shall come under our deliberation in so just and faithful a manner as to promote thy honor and glory and to advance the good of all those whose interests thou hast committed to our charge. All which we ask in the name and for the sake of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning to the members. Um, I wish to apologize for our late start. Members may or may not know Dominica probably has a record of the um, best starting on time in the region. And I'm sorry that I had to cause a little blemish to it this morning. Um, a member called me asking for some advice on a matter, and I acceded to the member's request, and um, that delayed me somewhat. So we'll, we will deal with the order paper as is. Madam Speaker. We will be dealing with the order paper as is. We will have now the affirmation of allegiance to the new clerk. And I would invite members to take their seat until this and other matters according to the order of paper occur. Affirmation of allegiance to the new clerk. I, Daniel James de Solomon, affirm that I will faithfully be a true allegiance to the Commonwealth of Dominica according to law. I, Daniel James, do solemnly affirm that I will faithfully execute the office of clerk of the House of Assembly without fear or favor, affection or ill will, that in the execution of the function of that office, I will honor, uphold, and preserve the constitution of the, the Commonwealth of Dominica.
Move to the next item on the order, people. Obituary and congratulatory remarks. <laughs> I don't know if any other member wishes to congratulate the new clerk of the house who has been now appointed, but I wish to lead the charge in that direction and to say to Mr. James, congratulations. I think he is doing a very good job. Um, it's a learning experience for anybody to take on a, an onerous task like the clerk of the house is. You have to deal with diverse people of the diverse dispositions and sometimes it can get pretty horrendous and Mr. James being a, 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 the meek person and I do mean it in a, a complimentary way and in no way derogatory because I think you know if gentle Jesus was meek and mild who are we not to be meek but having said that um, you know it behoves us then n not to take advantage of his good nature of his meekness and I would ask members when they come to Mr. James please do not bull rag him as certain members have done I will speak more about that later I don't want to be long already we started late I don't know if anybody else wants to join me they may do so but I wish Mr. James hearty congratulations a good run as clerk of the house and I wish him all the best and I hope he enjoys this new learning experience in his life Madam Speaker, I, I wish to, on behalf of the government side, to extend uh, congratulations to Mr. James on his appointment as the clerk of the House of Assembly. Uh, I agree with you that this, this um, position is, requires um, tremendous tact and discipline uh, because of the voluminous nature of the of the paperwork which uh, the Parliament deals with on, on a regular basis. He has to go through every piece of legislation to assure its correctness and, in terms of editing and so forth. So I, I really want to wish him all the best and, and to say to him, rest assured that he has my own and that of the government side's uh, fullest cooperation and also respect uh, to him personally and also to the office which he holds. On behalf of the members of the opposition side, Mr. James, I extend congratulations to you as the new clerk of the House. It is a steep order, and um, it's not an easy task. I've known Mr. James for some time prior to him sitting as Speaker of the House, and I have known him as clerk of the House. Maybe you're going to be Speaker soon. Um, and I know him to be um, an honest and straightforward person. Uh, Mr. Jones, I would like to advise you to take this along with you. Uh, remember your position, your clerk of the house, and as a result, I would encourage you to do the right thing, serve all the members of parliament fairly and across the board. I have confidence that knowing the person that you are, that you will do just that. Again, I just wish to congratulate you, and um, you're filling some big shoes, so ensure that you pad your feet sometimes. Madam Speaker, before the confirmation of the minutes. Item five on the other paper. On um, congratulatory remarks. Well, since I'm on my feet, Madam Speaker. No, 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 it doesn't work like that. We are, we are a house of order and discipline and rules. I need members to ac accept that under my watch, I will be very vigilant in ensuring that rules obtain it's not going to be any other way under my watch. All members, including myself, have to obey the rules. Members cannot just bob up and decide when they want to come and speak. There's a procedure to be followed. In fact, the reason why I was late in coming here is because a member was observing such a rule. 
and asked to see me before. Okay, so this is how it operates. Okay, right now, I'm just going to allow Mr. James to thank the, well, if he wishes to, that is, and then we will move on to the confirmation of minutes. Madam Speaker, thanks. I'd just like to say thank you to, for the kind remarks from members of the House. And I, I will say to the, to the Honorable House that I will do my best as Clerk of the House to upkeep the standing of the House and its procedures. Thank you. Can you come to the next? Um we're on five now. Go ahead, please. Confirmation of minutes. Madam Speaker, I beg to move that the minutes of the meeting of Wednesday 19th, Thursday 20th, Friday 21st, and Monday, 24th October, 2016, be confirmed as circulated. Seconded, Madam Speaker. It has been moved and seconded that the minutes of the meeting of Wednesday 19th, Thursday 20th, Friday 21st, and Monday, 24th October, be confirmed as circulated. Those in favor? Those against, the ayes have it. The minutes stand confirmed as circulated. Next, please. Announcement by speaker. Um, I just wish to point out two things to members. Um, I was privy to uh, one of these social media um, pages someone sent me showing that a member is insisting that I do not give them time to ask questions. I just want um, the members to know that in spite of that particular member's um, cry, other members found it fit to send in questions. I have always told members there are two deadlines relating to the questions. The first is that a notice, according to the standing orders, has to be sent 12 days before. But then, items to be put on the folder paper must be sent 14 days before. I have stressed repeatedly to members, and members are taking up this, that you do not have to wait to get a notice to send in your questions. In fact, several members prior to the notice being sent week before last, in fact, sent in questions. It means that certain members understand that. Unfortunately, a particular member doesn't seem to appreciate that he can send in his questions before he gets a notice, comes into the house with his questions within minutes of getting his notice, and proceeds to verbally abuse the clerk of the house, telling the clerk, why aren't you taking my question? And this is not right. This is not right. In fact, um, in talking to the clerk about it, I, I, I was minded to say, albeit tongue-in-cheek, that, you know, maybe we should put the standing orders on Facebook and it will get more attention. It's really a serious matter. Members should not be abusing the clerk. The other thing I want to point out again is to members who do not read the rules and understand what is meant by the six-month period that the, 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 the Constitution speaks about. I was privy to a, 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 a tip whereby a member of the opposition was trying to let the public know that the Speaker and the Prime Minister were in breach of the Constitution because they hadn't held a meeting for six months. That is not what the rules say, you know. The rule actually is saying that between the last meeting of a session, 
and the first meeting of a session, there ought not to be more than six months. It speaks nothing about meetings within a session. And so, for all practical purposes, a meeting could be held, which is the budget meeting when House is, op um, House is, is, is um, commences, the, a session commences, and another meeting need not be held until the day before the prorogation, and the rules would have been complied with. So I'm asking members, please, before you go out there and misrepresent the Constitution, misrepresent the standing orders, and misrepresent yourselves, please take a little time and learn to understand both the provisions of the House, which are the standing orders, and the Constitution. Because it is so often that members are misrepresenting the Constitution and the standing orders. It's very clear English. And if perchance you do not understand it, please don't be so proud as not to ask somebody, can you explain to me what this means? Because I don't think I'm getting it. Because giving misinformation to the public out there is manifestly wrong. And I want to implore members, please stop that practice of misinformation. That's all for me for announcements by speaker for now. Can we move to the next item, please? Presentation of papers. Madam Speaker, I beg to lay the following papers on the table. One, the schedule of supplementary appropriation for the financial year ending July 2016. For the financial year ending July 2016 to April 2017. And two, the report to the Director of Audit of the public accounts for the fiscal year ended June 30, 2014. Madam Speaker, I beg to lay the following papers on the table. Report of the Integrity Commission of the Commonwealth of Dominica for the year ended August 31, 2016. Government notices. Um, is this member keeps standing. I don't know why, but we haven't reached anywhere near where the opposition can speak. I don't know why, but he's not even offering a reason. Continue, please. Madam Speaker, I beg to give notice that at the later stage of the proceedings, I will be moving the motion and taking all stages of the bills standing in my name on the other paper. Madam Speaker, I beg to give notice that at a later stage of the proceedings, I will be moving the motion and taking all stages of the bill standing in my name on the other paper. Madam Speaker, I beg to give notice that at the later stage of the proceeding, I will be moving the motion and taking all stages of the bills standing in my name on the other paper. On official notices. Madam Speaker, under the authority of Standing Order 31-6, I move that the bill for an act to amend the House of Assembly Elections Act 
and the Bill for an Act to Amend the Registration of Electors Act, standing in the name of the Prime Minister on the order paper of this Honorable House, the meeting of this Honorable House, be withdrawn. Second in. Um, the member, I don't think, um, I think this was meant to withdraw bills that members put in. I don't know that members can withdraw other people's bills, you know. I'm not, I'm, I've never heard of that before, but perhaps the member can. Come. As we got cited specifically, yeah. standing order 31-6. Yeah. That, that would, that would, we, no. And standing order 31-6, Madam Speaker, reads as follows. 31-6. Notwithstanding the provisions of standing order 28, notice of motion, the following motions may be moved without notice. And 31-6 says, a motion for the withdrawal of a bill. Uh, you do understand that these motions, they, they, they don't require any, um, any debate, right? Pardon? Section 40, 416B. Standing orders for the House. 416B says, the mover of an original motion, which this is, shall be entitled to 45 minutes for his opening speech <laughs> and 20 minutes for his reply. These are the provisions of the standing order. Um, the perhaps the member should read standing order 28. Madam Speaker, 31 says notwithstanding standing order 28. This is a motion without notice. 31 is clear. There's no ambiguity there. Notwithstanding the provisions of Standing Order 28, Notice of Motions, the following motions may be moved without notice. And at item 6 of 31, it says, a motion for the withdrawal of a bill. That's all I'm doing. I'm moving a motion for the withdrawal of a bill, or bills that stand in the name of the Prime Minister. Of the well, this is government. what I'm trying to tell you. Uh, the member, a member, is the, the person who puts in something can ask for it to withdraw, not just any member. Madam Speaker, where in the rules does it say that? But obviously, the I mean, motion, if that is the case, any member could just rise and say, say so. But no, you see. So it's debated, Madam Speaker. The merits, the merits, and the merits. But uh, the unfortunate the thing debated. about this is that somebody will have to debate for you because, as you know, until you apologize, you can't involve yourself in debate. <laughs> that so, is so very the, clear. The, the, the rules just changing as we go in along. No, no, no. Madam Speaker, Wait a minute, just a minute, just a minute. When the, uh, the last meeting, I agree that I'm old, I agree that I'm a forgetful person, but thank God for transcripts and audio. At that meeting, the member was told that until he apologizes, and it's part of the minutes, you might want to look at it and see. Member, will you please take your seat? Let me talk to, to the members. I'm dealing with one thing at a time. Okay. I think it's page... That's why I don't take part in the prayer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Madam Speaker, I... I would just can, can you just give me a chance to... No, I'm just going to refer you to one thing, Madam Speaker, here. Can you give me a chance to respond to the member? Am I allowed that privilege, please? Pardon? 
well, let me deal with this one first. No, it's not there, no? it's where I, I think it was the next day. Page 17. I'll just read the last paragraph on that page. The Honorable Speaker then concluded by stating that her ruling regarding the member for the Marigot constituency and leader of the opposition, Mr. Lennox Clinton, apologizing to the chair before taking part in the debate stood, and he would not be allowed to speak on any matter coming before the House for the rest of the session until he apologizes. This is what the speaker said then. The session closes when House is prorogued. So when the House is um, recommenced in whenever, usually July at budget, then the member may resume his ability to speak. And I insist on it because the member was extremely rude, not only to the chair, but the house. And he has refused to apologize. He has refused to apologize. The member said things. He, every member apologizes when the chair. This is the first time since I am sitting here in my 18th year that a member has refused to apologize to the chair. And you know, with concurrence from members, the majority of members, I think this stand is, is, is necessary. Okay? So now we move, yes, let me hear yes, you please. Madam Speaker, notwithstanding what you may have read, and for avoidance of doubt, uh -huh. I refer you, Madam Speaker, to Standing Order 52B. Uh. Which reads, Madam Speaker, the Speaker or the Chairman shall order a member whose conduct is grossly disorderly to withdraw immediately from the House during the remainder of that sitting. That is one thing. That is just one thing. It's not just for everything. Okay? But, but if, Madam Speaker, if we're not going to abide by standing order 52B, would you be kind enough to refer me to the order by which we are going? What, can you understand the difference between disorderly conduct and being extremely rude and obnoxious? Well, well, I don't know where you see that. Madam Speaker, I, I'm referring to But did you read standing order um, 50? No. Three? What I'm asking, Madam Speaker, is whether standing order 52. Um, I am not going. Let me tell you, I have ruled on this and I'm not going back. You may challenge me where you care to. There's nowhere in the rules, Madam Speaker. Yes. Where a member, a, a member has the authority to seek to get a matter which a member has brought to the parliament removed on the other paper. I cannot stand in the House, Madam Speaker. I cannot stand in the House, Madam Speaker. No, 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 no. we're seeking clarification there to your, to your matter. We're trying to educate the House in the matter. No, 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 no. there are two matters there. You understand? Uh, we cannot, any member here cannot stand, Madam Speaker, and ask that a question which a member places on the other paper be removed. Even if most of the questions before the House are in contradiction, are in, in confrontation with Rule 23. You see what I'm saying? So a, a member cannot stand and move a motion to say that being standing in the name of a minister, a member of the audience, be removed from the other paper. That, that, I think the member for Margaret, Madam Speaker, is wrongly interpreting standing order 31. You know? And, and uh, 
a motion, but hear what 49 says, Madam Speaker. Hear what 49 says. A motion may be withdrawn at the request of the mover. A motion may be withdrawn at the request of the mover. After it has been moved by leave of the House or committee before the question is fully put thereon. It is, no, it's the same thing. A motion to move the bill. Every <laughs> bill is virtually a motion. And if you read what the member just said, when they stand, they, they, they say, Madam Speaker, I beg to give notice that at a later stage of the proceedings, I will be moving the motion and taking all the stages of the bill standing in my name on the other paper. The first issue is a motion. So therefore, it is a motion. Further, I want to read members standing order 24, okay, which says, at the time appointed for the asking and answering of questions, understanding order number 16, the speaker shall call in turn each member in whose name a question stands upon the order paper, in the order which the questions are printed. Each member so called shall rise in his place, okay, and the member shall give his reply. But it also says that where a member is not there, no other member can stand in his place and ask the question unless he has written proof of that. So therefore, if, 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 if it is for a question, a member, another member cannot stand and do something, much less for a motion. And I'm going to rule that this is there for the person who puts it in can take it out. And I'm so ruling. So we will move to the next item, please. Madam Speaker, the standing and, orders. And we are under nine, and I'm reading what the member has to say about whether he's going to ask his question or not. We are not going back. We are under unofficial notices, nine. Madam Speaker, your opening remarks. The member, I, please, 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 okay? Let us conduct this house in an orderly fashion. I'm trying to do that. I'm trying I to have made a ruling. We are moving on. We are asking questions. And I'm wishing to move on. If the member wishes to go further, then they can ask, um, set up the, 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 the framework within which they will ask their question. If not, I will call on the next person who has a question on the other paper to rise. And that is um, questions, oral questions. Can we have some cooperation, please? Madam Speaker, how can we be in Parliament and we be stifled? The member... That's the place to speak on behalf of our constituents. Can, just a minute. Um, we cannot be stifled in the Parliament. The member... Just because you're asked to obey rules, that doesn't mean that you're being stifled. You are not being stifled. The rules are there to be obeyed. The standing orders are there. And I am tell, I'm saying to the members that we are proceeding. Can we have some cooperation? We are now on persons who have to ask questions. You are not being stifled. A uh, the, Speaker, the whole idea behind the rules the way it should be. Section 31 allows for a motion to withdraw. Any member can do that. No, it at isn't. Sec but at you section, at section 60. Um, at, can, at section can, 67. Madam Speaker, the point of order. Can the member can the member please? Can the, can the member Speaker, understand? The the people. You can just can, decide how you want, when no, you want. Anything I am not, can, can you take your seat, please? I know that the member is aggrieved that his plan is not going as what he plan? expected. What plan? What, what, what plan? What plan? Are you aware of plan? Speaker, Expose the plan to the Madam public. Speaker, on a point of order, the members of the opposition do not control this country. And neither do they control the No, this is the government. This is the government. Who's this is the government. Who's this is the government. You. You. This is you. The government. Who, who are you talking to? You. You. Charlie order. Chaplin, relax yourself. Order. 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 Order.
Not you, we representing the people, you're on the top nonsense. Yeah. Huh? That's right. Relax, my brother. Yeah. Sit down. You sit down. Who you? Who fought you? What nonsense is that? <laughs> I am sick and tired of the lot of interpretation. This is going to get out of the judge decide how she wants, when she wants, she interprets the law. Will the members, the member from Roseau North says that they have been stifled. And the member is being stifled by his own self. He is stifling his own self because the rules that he needs to follow, he's not following them. Um, a member is supposed to be waiting to be called upon to speak. Member does not do that. The member for the Marigot constituency and leader of the opposition rose to do something. Another member seconded it. I tried to point out to him while looking for the rules that he is not able to withdraw something that he didn't put on while I was looking for it. Another issue came up which I pointed out to him and it is the question of his ability to take part in debate. Another member counteracted it and said that such and such a rule says for a member who does that is only for a meeting. I pointed out to him that it was not a question of, as he tried to say, uh, gross disorderly. It was not being gross disorderly. It was, that, that was not it, so it did not come there. Okay? So the members are saying things and using parts of rules and not the entire rule. Now, if the rules of debate say a member desiring to speak shall rise in his face and if called upon shall address the chair, and no member shall speak unless called upon by the chair. I, I don't, why are you all seeing all the rules you all want? Calling upon me to do what the rules say I ought not to do. But when I point out the rule to you all, you all take umbrage and, 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 and raise the, the, the usual red flag, oh, we are being stifled. There are many members who get to speak and with, without one intervention from me because they are ad, ad, um, adhering to the rules. So members have to understand, you have to adhere to the rules. This is what I'm here for. Madam Speaker, this is true. You are there to adhere to the rules. Again, okay. let me read the rule for you, please, sir. A member desiring to speak, a member, a member, please take your seat. Please take your seat. You've not been called upon to speak. The member, please it take your so. seat. You can't be so. You can't be so. The member, please take your seat. Not at any time, you know. I, I am Madam not Speaker. I no, for the time being. Madam Speaker, I, I just heard a threat. You heard it? For now, but for the time being. It seems you have circumscribed my, my seating here. Yes, we, because you, we, because we. you interpret my mind. I, I have heard it. I have heard it. The member, I am speaking. Can you take your seat? You will be called upon in a while. The, mem the Attorney General rose on a point of order. In the order of business, I want to hear your point of order. Uh, Madam Speaker, we, I think matters have moved on. It was the point that was being made by the member, Mr. Baptist. Sorry, Senator Baptist, but I think the discussion between you and he have moved the matters along. The point I was simply going to make is that as I understood it, you had ruled on the issue of whether or not the motion that the leader of the opposition was seeking to make was permissible. And therefore, if you have ruled, the rules are, are very clear. We have to move on. We cannot go back on that debate. And that was simply the point of what I was making. Well, you see, I think we need to read that standing order um, again. Was it the Prime Minister who read it? 39-1. Yes, 39-1. You see, 
you can't take bits and pieces of the rules that suit you and ignore those that don't. This is the thing about a law, you know. It is all-encompassing, and there are, you can't just read the part that is there for expediency and don't read the others. 39 withdrawal of motions. That is a rule that is totally unambiguous. It says, a motion may be withdrawn at the request of the mover after it has been moved, okay, by leave of the House or committee before the question is fully put, okay? A motion may be withdrawn at the request of the mover. And it says when it can be withdrawn, after it has been moved. After it has been moved. Has that motion been moved, Honorable House? So you, even if I were to buy into what you were saying, you were absolutely premature. Do you understand that, the member? And please, members, please, members, please, members, I've asked over and over, please try to understand the rules. They are there, okay? Okay, so now we are on, I, I've ruled on it, I'm saying, oh yes, sorry about that. Well, one minute, let me just make my final point on that. I have ruled on it, I'm saying to you that it's only a mover of a motion, which all bills are, who can remove it. And since the move, it hasn't even been moved yet, it's even, even if I were to buy into you, it is premature. So we are done with that, we are moving on now, but before we move to the item we're on, can I hear from the member for Rosu Central? Madam Speaker, with due respect, I think a person, if a person is making a decision, they can always reconsider the decision. So I don't think you should say, we're moving on, just cut blush. We have attorney general being paid by the state. He should be telling us and giving us the interpretation. But anyway, Madam Speaker. Excuse me, Madam but Speaker, wait, what, 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 one matter. moment, one yes. moment. Yeah. I don't know, I never invited you in your mind, in my mind. Uh -huh. I certainly promise you I will not. Yes. So you are not in a position to say when my mind is reconsidering something Brother, or not. I'm talking about you necessarily, Madam Speaker. And so therefore refrain from deciding when I am reconsidering or not. I refrain, Madam Speaker, but I want oh. to point out to the standing order, Madam Speaker. Yes. Madam Speaker, it is clear on the standing order 31 that it really speaks to a motion. And all the different sections or subsections of 31 is talking about different motions. The, the standing order, actually on 67, it specifically, if, for example, you could interpret on the 31 how you were interpreting it, then it would clearly say what it says. But you know what it says? It says a motion I said I'm done for the that, withdrawal you know. of a bill. With the member, but then 67, Madam Speaker, member, me, I have read. Madam Speaker, through you, let me just make a point. Now, please, well, you said that you're not blocking us, but that's what exactly that you're doing. Yes, because but, but if I have to entertain every member who wants to make a point after I have made a but ruling, Speaker, where are we I'm, going to go? I'm, I'm not just making a point. Anyhow, you know, I'm going based on the standing order. But that's you what see, you told us. That's what you told us. Go based on the standing but order. But the standing order so, also says the ruling so of on, the speaker shall be firm and final. On 67, Madam Speaker. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know. <laughs> Madam Speaker. <laughs> this is what I keep telling members. Madam Speaker, you, can you, I? you only observe the rules you care to observe. There's the one that says the speaker's ruling is final. You're not willing to listen to no, that one no, at all. Madam Speaker, that's why I said earlier that a person has a right to change his or her mind. Yeah, but so it, you can change your mind. Yes, but I'm not going to change it. And I told you, you can't enter my mind and make so me Madam do Speaker, that. So let's move on. Then, Madam Speaker. And then we're rehashing this. Okay. Can we move on, please? Madam, Madam Speaker, I'd like to revisit. There's a... I'm not allowing any members to revisit anything. We are moving on. No, no. No, Madam Speaker, I'm not speaking to the motion. I am, I am concerned because we have. You're a rising on a point of order. Yes, yes, Madam Speaker. What standing order? Madam Speaker, I am again referring to 50 
to be. Because I'm of the opinion, Madam Speaker. Oh, no, 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 no. We've Madam passed Speaker, that stage. I've yes, ruled on that. Yes, Madam Speaker, no, no. Madam Speaker, you have indicated to me that you're going to refer me to the section that you use to overrule the section, Madam Speaker. No, 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 I never because did. I told you you're not reading that section. section Listen, Speaker. I am not going to be rehashing things over. We will not get anywhere, no, member. But Madam Speaker, you, you read you please... your, your, your piece. I told you it's not relevant, and we are moving on. No, no, you said, Madam Speaker, you referred to the minutes, which I understand, and I'm saying that. I'm requesting of you the standing order that, you, that you're using, Madam Speaker, to avoid this standing order 52B. I, I said you read one standing order, but you haven't read that part yet. That's what I said. All I've asked you, Madam Speaker, is but you I, know, but I, 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 oh my I want goodness. to know. No. For my own edification, I need to know, Madam Speaker. I simply told the you the standing order that you referred to speaks of... Oh, my, 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 my. It says, Madam Mr. Speaker, Jones, I have my the Speaker or the Chairman shall order I, I, any I will read it. I will read it. Okay? And you, it's the Speaker or the Chairman shall order any member whose conduct is grossly disorderly to withdraw immediately. Ahead, okay? This is speaking of gross disorderly conduct. I do not deem a member calling the Speaker demon or telling the Speaker that she's, she's um, taking part in debate to be anything concerning grossly disorderly. Well, so Speaker, I am simply telling you that 52B does not apply. Well, Madam Speaker, anything and beyond I have gross so order is a ruled. Anything beyond gross is a crime, I have Madam so Speaker. ruled. The member, um, if you're not going to be reading your, your question, please take your seat. The member... And in my reading of section 50, of the, the standing order 50, you have no authority as Speaker of the House under Section 50 to prevent me from participating in debate for the rest of the session. There is no such provision in the standing order. And I will read 51. Just one moment, please. Just one moment. Just one moment, please. I am acquainted with the rule. And I'm telling you, that is not the rule. I, it is... apply what rule are you applying madam speaker because the only rule we see here that governs that sort of ruling from the speaker is at 50 section 51 the speaker or, or the chairman after having called the attention of the house or committee to the conduct of a member who persists in irrelevance None of this was done so i don't know why you're reading this Speaker, that was not what was done. No, but Speaker, and okay, I am okay, telling Speaker, the section two, a, section two a. Any member who has used objectionable or unparliamentary expressions and on being called to order has refused to withdraw such words or expressions or to explain them and has not offered an apology for the use thereof to the satisfaction of the House may be proceeded against and dealt with as though he had committed an offence on the paragraph 2B of this order. And paragraph 2B of the order says, the speaker or the chairman shall order any member whose conduct is grossly disorderly to withdraw immediately from the house during the remainder of that sitting. If a direction to withdraw under this paragraph be not complied with at once, or if on any occasion the speaker or the chairman considers that his powers under the previous provisions of the paragraph are inadequate, the speaker or chairman may name such member in pursuance of the procedure prescribed in the next succeeding paragraph. What we say, yeah, yeah, it says, if a member shows disregard for the authority of the chair or abuses the rules of the house by persistently and willfully obstructing the business of the house or otherwise, the speaker or the chairman shall direct the attention of members to the incident, mentioning by name the member concerned, 
Whenever a member has been so named by the speaker or the chairman, then A, the offense has been committed in the House. If the offense has been committed in the House, the speaker shall call upon a minister to move that Mr. So-and-so be suspended from the service of the House. The speaker shall put the question on such motion forthwith, no seconder being required, and no amendment adjournment of debate being allowed. Okay. If the offense has been committed in the committee, which is not applicable here, but let's go to see. If any such motion be carried and a member be suspended, his suspension on the first occasion shall be until the next meeting of the House. The only, the only, the only penalty that the Speaker has the authority to apply on the 50 is to prevent me from engaging in debate for the remainder of the meeting of the House. She has no authority under these standing orders to prevent me from participating in debate for the entire session. Mr. A.G., you know, you know, you know what we're talking about. Talk about who is understanding rules and who is not understanding rules now. You yes. understand the rule that was just read? The member must understand one thing. It says may. Everything is predicated by, by may. So the speaker may, may do all of these. That is all. The speaker may do all of these. And finally, okay, the standing order six, of um, subsection six, okay? Okay? The member, okay, can be with, asked to be withdrawn during, for the remainder of the session. And I'm reading six. You, you did not read six, okay? There's other things that it says so, okay? That the speaker has the authority to do certain things other than what is here. Yeah, just one minute. Six says the member has refused to withdraw. At no time in this parliament did I refuse to leave the parliament. I was asked to withdraw, and I told the sergeant at arms who was on his way to me that I'm withdrawing. You all were here. You all saw that. The, the authority of 56 only applies if the member, in this case me, refuses to withdraw from the House. Madam Speaker, my period of punishment has been served. It is time to finish with that and move on. I am going to rule on that after lunch, and for the time being, we'll continue with the order paper. I will, I will give a written ruling after lunch on this, and so I'm asking the member to continue and rise to, if he's asking a question. Note well the member has, this member apparently is tacitly withdrawing his right to ask questions. So he'll, he has not read it. He says, oral response A by the Honorable Member for Rosa North Constituency, Mr. Danny Lugay. Well, um, nine, nine, we are nine. As we go. At a later stage in the proceedings, I'll be asking no, it questions. it says, I beg to give notice. I beg to give notice, Madam Speaker, that at the later stage of the proceedings, I will be asking the question standing in my name on the order paper. Next one, please. Madam Speaker, I beg to give notice that at the later stage of the proceedings, I'll be asking the question standing in my name on the order paper. Questions. 
Member, your question for oral response. In light of the disclosure of the Honorable Minister of Finance that an amount of $16 million was paid to CS Global as commission with respect to transactions done on the Citizen by Investment Program for the financial year 2015-2016, will the Honorable Minister provide this Honorable House with the following information. One, the basis on which the total amount was calculated. Two, details of the, the agreement under which payment was made, and three, the total amount paid by way of commission or otherwise since the inception of the agreement. Final speaker, no commissions were paid to CS Global Partners. An amount of $15.9 million was paid to CS Global for promotion and marketing of Dominica's Citizenship by Investment Program. The amount was calculated based on a fee of US $15,000 per applicant to prove under the cash option and US $5,000 per applicant to prove under the real estate option. It should be noted that the total inflows of that period was $279.8 million. The agreement is made between the government of Dominica and CS Global Partners dated the 13th day of May 2014 and contains the undertakings of both parties for the implementation of the agreement. This includes the following. The responsibility of CS Global to market and promote Dominica's citizenship by investment program in international markets, develop and implement marketing and promotion strategies to increase the awareness, profile, and desirability of Dominica's CBI program, assist with the international monitoring of the program and the marketing and promotion by service providers, agents, developers, and other parties associated or proposing to be associated with the program, to evaluate the CBI program on a continuous basis and to provide the government with recommendations for improvement and protection of the program. And in response to question three, or part three of the, of the question, there are no commissions paid under the agreement. The last part I just heard mumbling and I couldn't hear what you were saying. <laughs> the last part. Your, your tone went down, I, I couldn't hear what you were saying. He just wants you to read the last part, the last, I guess the last couple of sentences. The response to part three of your question, sir, there, there were no commissions paid under the agreement. Okay. Regarding the operations of the citizenship by investment program, will the Honorable Minister inform this Honorable House as follows. The status of government's CBI account at the Royal Bank of Canada, in which it held a balance of 130.2 million EC dollars at the close of the financial year 2015-2016. Two, if the account is no longer in operation, why was it closed? When was it closed? What was the balance of the date of closure? And where have those funds been banked since? And three, the CBI revenues cleared into government bank accounts in Dominica from July 2016 to March 2017, broken down by month. Fourthly, have any of the certificates of naturalization and passports been issued in breach of the process so far in this financial year, and if so, how many? Madam Speaker, the Royal Bank of Canada chose not to maintain a government account for the CBI as at February 28, 2017. Two, the Royal Bank of Canada did not state a specific reason for not being able to maintain the account. 
The balance of funds as of 20 February 2017 was EC $258,067,074. <laughs> and the funds have been lodged at the National Bank of Dominica. Three, regards to months and amounts deposited, July $52,112,439.85. August, $72,370,901.93. .73. September, $59,383,582.00. October, $55,209,745.43. November, $50,154,211.00. And 56 cents. December, thirty million twenty-seven twenty-seven thousand nine hundred and seventy dollars and forty cents. January, twenty-six million one hundred and twenty-three thousand five hundred and fourteen dollars and ninety-three cents. February, nineteen million five hundred and sixty-eight thousand three hundred and forty-nine dollars and thirty-nine cents. March, thirty-one million nine hundred and twenty-five thousand six hundred and three dollars and three cents for a total of $396,876,317.85. Four, Madam Speaker, it is unclear precisely what process the Member of Parliament for Marigot is referring to. However, I am advised that clear procedures are in place for the handling of applications for citizenship and the issue of certificates of naturalization and the issuance of passports. Regarding the situation with Ali Reza Zibalat Monfared, Iranian national and Dominican citizenship holder, will the Honorable Minister inform this Honorable House as follows? One, the reason why the alleged January 2016 cancellation of his diplomatic passport was not reported to Parliament when a question requesting such information was asked on the 19th of October, 2016. Two, how did government become aware that he was a person of interest to law enforcement authorities in Iran on or before January 20th, 2016? And three, if it was by extradition request, why was there no hearing in Dominica for his extradition prior to his departure in June of 2016, after living on the island for more than six months. Madam Speaker, no question was asked in the Parliament on October 19, 2016, in respect to Mr. Mon Fared, nor to the cancellation of the diplomatic passport issued to him. The question which was asked was general in nature and the response is a matter of record and available in the handset. Madam Speaker, the government of Dominica was not aware on or before January 2016 that Mr. Monfared was a person of interest to law enforcement authorities in Iran. In or about January 2016, the government became aware informally of a dispute between Mr. Monfared and a business partner in Malaysia which resulted in complaints being made against him to the police. It was decided then that in the circumstances, it would not be in the best interest of Dominica that he continued to represent our interests. I speak a follow-up question. The question posed in the Parliament to the Minister of Foreign Affairs in October 19, 2016, requested the names of the holders of Dominican diplomatic passports who had those passports revoked. According to the information subsequently revealed, at the time of the question, you knew as Minister of Foreign Affairs that you had revoked Mr. Monfared's passport. Why was Mr. Monfared's name not mentioned to us in a specific request in the question on October 19? That is what, that is what we're asking. Madam Speaker, apparently the, the, the leader of the opposition does not understand what specific means. 
a general question was asked and that was responded to and it is in the minutes of the that we confirmed in the parliament this morning we provided no specific information on any particular individual we responded to the general question which was asked Statement by ministers. Introduction of bills. Madam Speaker, I move that the bill short entitled Income Tax Amendment Act 2017 be read the first time. Second demands. Income Tax Act Amendment to the Act to the Inter Income Tax Act Amendment Act 2017. The bill has been read a first time. Madam Speaker, I move that the bill shortly entitled House of Assembly Elections Amendment Act 2017 be read a first time. Second it, Madam Speaker. House, Assembl of House of Assembly Election Amendment Act 2017. The bill has been read a first time. Madam Speaker, I move that the bill shortly entitled Registration of Electors Amendment Act 2017 be read a first time. Second it, Madam. Registration of Electors Amendment Act 2017. The bill has been read a first time. Madam Speaker, I move that the bill shortly entitled Stamp Amendment Act 2017 be read a first time. Second, it, Madam Speaker. Stamp Amendment Act 2017. The bill has been read a first time. Madam Speaker, I move that the bill shortly entitled Alien Land Holding Amendment Act 2017 be read a first time. Second it. Alien Land Holding Amendment Act 2017. The bill has been read a first time. Second it. Police Amendment Act 2017. The bill has been read a first time. Madam Speaker, I move that the bill shortly entitled Title of Registration Amendment Act 2017 be read a first time. Second it, Madam Speaker. Title by Registration Amendment Act 2017. The bill has been read a first time. Public Business Government Business Motion. Supplementary estimates of expenditure for the financial year ending 30th June 2017. Be it resolved that this Honorable House approves the supplementary estimates of expenditure for the year 2016-2017, amounting to 155 million twelve thousand seven hundred and one dollars and ninety-eight cents, the details of which are contained in the attached schedule. Um, yes. Um, 
you you have the details of the amendment or we'll do that in committee okay then just to let the members know there's a, a, a slight change in the figures so that will be done in committee i'll second the amendment pardon i'm just seconding the amendment to be Madam Speaker, the supplementary estimates being presented today is in respect of advances made from the Contingencies Fund for the period July 2016 to April 2017. The bill circulated indicates a total appropriation in the amount of $154,694,700. However, Madam Speaker, a correction was necessary to the allocation approved for road works at Cabanis. This makes total of $155,012,701.98. The precise amendments will be proposed at the committee stage of the proceedings. Madam Speaker, this presentation complies with Section 81 of the Commonwealth of Dominica Constitution Order 1978, as well as Section 12 of the Finance Administration Act No. 4 of 1994. These provisions allow the government the flexibility of incurring expenditure not, not originally approved in the annual budget where it is deemed necessary and subsequently seeking approval of the Parliament for such spending. The details of the expenditure are as follows. 1% or $1,130,879 was grant funding, while 99% or $153,881,823.20 was met from local resources, primarily with funds from the Citizenship by Investment Program. Madam Speaker, the appropriation in respect of the Audit Department amounted to $100,000. This was authorized to conduct financial audits at the Public Works Corporation and at the Dominica Solid Waste Management Corporation. These audits are required to ensure that there is an accurate representation of the financial position of the respective corporations and that their operations are being efficiently managed. The Ministry of Justice, Immigration and National Security received the sum of $2,783,506. These additional funds were appropriated for the following. 96,000 was for the purchase of office tools and equipment for use at the Attorney General Chambers. $986,000 was required for the purchase of three vehicles to assist with crime prevention and reduction. I must make mention that in this financial year, the police department embarked on a community policing program, which was launched in Calibishi and is expected to be rolled out in other parts of the island. There is also a need for greater patrols in the city of Rosa, the town of Portsmouth, and tourist sites. The sum of $1,501,350 was required for the procurement of a much needed fire engine for use at the Douglas Charles Airport. This fire engine is essential to enhance the av aviation fighting capacity, firefighting capacity at the airport and is also a certification requirement. An amount of $25,644 was required for reimbursement of unspent funds, which was originally provided by the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, the OECS, for implementation of the Focolay Community Risk Reduction Project. The sum of $131,411 was required to effect improvements to the security block, the completion of the superintendent office, and the command center of the Dominical State Prison in order to ensure that the environment at the prison is safe, secure, and humane. 
the sum of $19,111 was approved to meet outstanding commitments in relation to Tropical Storm Erica affected victims. And the sum of $24,000 was appropriated to meet the cost of rental of office space for the Law Commission. Madam Speaker, in respect to, to the Electoral Office, the total sum of $1,505,163 was appropriated to meet expenses related to the procurement of a multi-purpose identification card management and personalization system. Madam Speaker, the appropriation in respect to the Ministry of Trade, Energy and Employment was $5,466,500. This was required to facilitate the continuation of the National Employment Program up to the period ending June 2017. Madam Speaker, the appropriation in respect of the Office of the Prime Minister is $8,401,088, which are listed as follows. $7,500,000 was made available for the public, public support program. $56,918 was provided for funeral, official funerals of the late Marcelo Powell, Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Education, Victor Avondale River, former Minister of Government, and Clarence Lee, former Member of Parliament. $297,255 was approved to allow for participation in a 30th anniversary celebration event, which was held in Dubai in October 2016. The sum of $40,141 represents contributions to a local institution, namely the Dominica Association of Music Professionals, to assist in the training of musicians. $23,200 represents an amount provided for professional services in respect to a tourism consultation for the National Reconstruction Task Force. $16,514 was approved to meet expenses incurred for hosting of the 2016 Diaspora Forum. $438,008 was approved for the purchase of vehicles for the use at the Office of the Prime Minister and at the Office of the President. $29,052 was for the purchase of furniture and office equipment for use at the social care centers. Madam Speaker, an additional amount of $53,815,930 was allocated to the Ministry of Finance. After the passage of Tropical Storm Erica, Dominica was assisted by CARICOM and other member states, institutions, individuals and organizations, among others. And therefore, it was only fitting that we should be proactive in lending support to other sister countries who themselves had been affected by natural disasters. In light of this, an amount of $950,915 was made available for, three, for, for, made available for assisting three countries in the aftermath of natural disasters. Haiti, $271,690. The Bahamas, $271,690. And St. Vincent and the Grenadines, $407,545. Madam Speaker, the government of Dominica intends to deliver on its promise of constructing an international airport. In this regard, a firm from the United States of America was engaged to conduct studies on the feasibility of this project for Dominica. The firm has reported that this project is indeed feasible. The next step is to do more detailed studies of the area to provide more specific details on the construction cost. The sum of $2,008,000 was made available to meet expenses for these initial studies. Madam Speaker, for the period July 2016 to December 2016, 
the cost and marketing of, and promotion of the CBI program was $45 million. $238,193. In addition, due diligence fees paid for the same period was approximately $15,618,822. Provision is made to capture these expenditures relating to promotion and administering the CBI program. The appropriation in respect to the Ministry of Agriculture was $193,000. $998. In an effort to enhance food and nutrition security in Dominica, the government has invested heavily in the construction of a modern national abattoir. An amount of $113,529 was approved to facilitate payment to suppliers of pork and poultry for the national abattoir. $45,000 was also approved under the Propel promotional regional opportunities for produce through enterprise linkages project funded by the government of Canada. $35,469 was appropriated for drainage on pilot farms under the banana stabilization project. Madam Speaker, the sum of $160,000 was approved for the Ministry of Education and Human Resource Development. $100 thousand dollars represented a grant to the St. John's Secondary School to assist with the operational expenses, and sixty thousand dollars was for the refurbishment of the Kalebishi Primary School's hard court. Madam Speaker, the allocation for the Ministry of Housing, Lands and Water Resource Management is ten million two hundred and twenty eight thousand four hundred and sixty three dollars. Of this sum, eight million $653,377 was approved under the Housing and Sanitation Program on behalf of various communities. An amount of $277,956 was granted by the South Korean government towards the implementation of single occupancy housing in the Kalanago Territory. In addition, an amount of $1 $357,130 was approved as counterpart contribution to the third water supply network upgrade project funded by the Caribbean Development Bank. An additional sum of $1,073,520 was allocated to the Ministry of Social Services, Family and Gender Affairs. An amount of $782,000 $665 represents grants to local institutions, namely the Portsmouth Town Council and the Canefield Urban Council, to facilitate the purchase of dumper trucks, as well as for providing financial support to seven residential charitable institutions. The amount of $290,855 was also approved for the completion of the Penville and Wesley multipurpose facilities. Madam Speaker, in respect to the Ministry of Health and the Environment, the sum of $5,819,565 was approved for the following. $122,913 to meet payments towards the regularization of the Office of the Medical Board. $102,500 was approved towards implementation of strategies to address the vagrancy issues in Dominica. And $14,400 was for the hosting of the OECS 30F Policy Board Council of Health Ministers. $437,066 is to meet expenses related to the construction of the new national hospital. Work commenced in October 2016 and is progressing satisfactorily. $42,686 was approved for the visual diagnostic session conducted by the Milago Miracle, Mission, Miracle Eye Care Mission, financed by the government of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. $5 million was approved towards the implementation of the pilot national health insurance scheme. This program will assist the mothers aged 45 and under who are pregnant 
and children three years and younger who need, to, who need help to deal with critical medical issues. This program will also serve to improve the funding for health services and improve the quality and access to health care to many Dominicans. $100,000 was approved for the Dominica Cancer Society, which will assist individuals to access cancer treatment within the region and the United States. This injection of resources will lower the average cost of treatment and help to increase the number of patients being afforded access to treatment. Madam Speaker, an amount of $1,310,987 was approved for the Ministry of Tourism and Urban Renewal. $720,000 represents an an additional contribution to the Dominica Festivals Committee for the hosting of Carnival 2017, and $590,987 was required to make payments for a traffic survey as part of the Rosa Enhancement Project. Madam Speaker, an appropriation in respect to the Ministry of Youth, Sports, Culture, and Constituency Empowerment is $16 million $456,791 as follows. $15,069,875 was approved for various projects under the Constituency Empowerment Program, including are the following. Community-based projects in various constituencies, $3,900,000. Collio, $300,000. Cottage, $300,000. Granby Constituency, $300,000. Marigot, $300,000. Rosa South, $300,000. Paybush, $300,000. Rosa Central, $300,000. Salisbury, $300,000. Pitit Saban, $300,000. Rosa Valley, $300,000. Sufre, $300,000. Rosa North, $300,000. And Vegas, $300,000. Community road enhancement projects in various communities, $10,982,221.30. Collio, $399,360. St. Joseph, $339,550,045. Roseau Valley, $1,520,075.70. La Plaine, $642,256.29. Pitis Savan, $1,212,441. Cottage, $555,292.92. Salibia, $886,700. $886,700. Grand four, $404,410.83. Portsmouth, $545,421. Grand Bay, $1,003,863.75. Vekas, $542,656.25. Maho, $1,453,995.81. Pebush, $901,000. $901,746. Cassie Bruce, $594,451.30. Madam Speaker, $12,825 has been approved under the National Youth Policy Project. The policy intends to map out a strategic framework for the youth of Dominica and come up with the necessary recommendations to improve on the delivery of youth development services. Assistance was given to the Dominica Youth Business Trust in the amount of $1 million for use as a guarantee fund for loans to young people who wish to get into business. This will assist in promoting entrepreneurship among the country's youth by creating meaningful employment. $212,700 was approved to assist with carnival celebrations in various communities. $54,125 was approved for the employment of officers to supervise the constituency empowerment road pro projects. 
$46,706 was approved for an environmental impact assessment for the, for the multipurpose indoor sporting facility. The facility has been designed primarily to accommodate a multi-use court for the purpose of playing netball, basketball, and volleyball. $20,560 was approved for the hosting of Heritage Day 2016 activities in the village of Maho. Madam Speaker, the sum of $5,187,972 was approved for the Ministry of Commerce, Enterprise, and Small Business Development. $2,895,474 of these funds was for new and small business enterprise development in various communities. A further $1,292,497 was approved to meet other small business grants due to the increased request for financial assistance. Approval was granted towards the development of the music and arts and artists in the creative industry. An amount of $1 million was made available for a credit facility to be managed by the aid bank for this initiative. Madam Speaker, the appropriation in respect to the Ministry of Planning, Economic Development and Investment is in the sum of $250,000 for providing financial assistance for enterprise development. Madam Speaker, the establishment department was allocated $3,977,355 to meet the additional cost of telecommunication expenses, mainly due to the increased number of new offices and increased roaming charges. Madam Speaker, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and CARICOM Affairs received additional allocation of $2,336,000 $468. Most of the sum totaling $1,808,521 was approved to meet Dominica's contribution to the CARICOM Implementation Agency for Crime and Security Impacts. In addition to the above, funds amounting to $105,370 were approved for the purchase of a vehicle for the use at the Office of the Consul General, Consul General in New York, while $129,128 was for the purchase of a vehicle for use at the Office of the Permanent Representative of the Commonwealth of Dominica to the United Nations. In addition, Madam Speaker, resources in the amount of $293,449 were approved by the government, were provided by the government of South Korea for the procurement of two vehicles to be used for the performance of protocol services. The government of Dominica is very grateful for this gesture. Madam Speaker, the second largest allocation was to the Ministry of Public Works and Ports in the sum of $35,885,366. These funds were required to implement various critical infrastructure works across Dominica as follows. $105,407 to provide for government's contribution to the Caribbean Development Bank CDB grant funded project in respect of the engagement of design engineers for post tropical storm Erica rehabilitation and rest restoration works. $406,180 represents the CDB grant component for the engagement of the design engineers for the above mentioned works. $1,500,000 was approved for further river dredging to enhance safety for citizens and lessen damage to property from flooding. $164,503 was provided as government's contribution to the engagement of four engineers under the Cuban Technical Assistance Program to aid in the rebuilding process. $1,000,000. $96,463 was approved for vegetation management, or what we call the cutting of grass and the overhangs, in various locations to improve the safety of the traveling public. $287,074 
was for improvement to the road surface in the vicinity of the Petrocaribe plant and leading to the communities of Jimit and Won. 5 million $403,537 was for general road maintenance works in various locations island-wide. $2,575,741 was allocated for emergency interventions in the Cabernet area following recent road failure. $5 million was, for, was approved for meeting commitments payable under the contract for the West Bridge project which was recently commissioned. $856,581 was for further dredging to the Melville Hall River to prevent further flooding. $14,845,417 was allocated for additional infrastructural works at the Douglas Charles Airport. $1,301,393 to meet wages to interns under the Community Employment Program. $236,070 was allocated as counterpart contribution for feasibility studies and designs for rehabilitation of the Lubeer to Bacatel Road. $600,000 was provided for road safety works at River Sirik, which includes a retaining wall and culvert crossing. $1 million was approved for road protection and restoration in the village of Penville for the construction of a written wall and associated road works. And $350,000 was allocated for the construction of a river wall at River Estate in Canefield. Madam Speaker, without a doubt, the expenditures detailed on the attached schedule, though significant, was in an effort to achieve increased growth increased employment, and the reduction of poverty in our country. This clearly demonstrates government's overall efforts to increase the quality of life of the Dominican people. Madam Speaker, I recommend for the approval of this Honorable House the supplementary estimates in the sum of $155,000 million, sorry, $155,000,000, $12,701.98. Madam Speaker, thank you. The estimates are now before the House for debate. Madam Speaker, let me rise in support of the supplementary estimates just presented by the Honorable Prime Minister. And quite fittingly so, Madam Speaker, before I continue, the Prime Minister established, and quite rightly so, that the supplementary estimates went to boosting growth, generating employment, and reducing poverty in the country. So while we continue to improve the economy, while we continue to as it were, close the fiscal gap as we have been doing since 2000, Madam Speaker, and bringing back the state of fiscal health to the economy. We have not forgotten one of our primary principles in the Dominican Labour Party, Madam Speaker, and that is to be able to take care of the less fortunate among us, because we believe that no matter how much we improve, the economy, there will always be persons that we will have to reach out to. And the social programs and the wide gamut of social programs that the government has implemented, and most of them being enumerated in the supplementary appropriation, is well known uh, to the entire uh, pop populace of Dominica, Madam Speaker. And not only the populace of Dominica, but I would say that a lot of pundits around the region and further afield, Madam Speaker, have been commending the government on the innovative package of uh, programs that we have implemented thus far. And I will speak to some of them as I continue to speak, Madam Speaker. But I would like to touch on them in order, not necessarily in my ministry, but just to touch on them as they are enumerated in the supplementary appropriation. And the first one I would like to speak to 
is the money spent on the processes for election reform. And we see that ever since we got into office, the opposition have called for election reform. Albeit, mind you, that not one single iota, Madam Speaker, was done towards election reform during their tenure of government. Yet, we see that upon the Dominican Labour Party taking office, Madam Speaker, the chorus has always been sung. And, Madam Speaker, we didn't, we didn't shy away from that challenge. We haven't shied away from the challenge. We have always said to the country that in order of priority, we had to bring the fiscal situation in the country under control. And as the situation continues to get better, so we can put some of those things on the front burner. And it is clear from this supplementary appropriation that we are spending monies to establish the ID card, Madam Speaker, so that we can implement the, the ID card and the personalization system. And that, Madam Speaker, is one of the promises that we have made towards election reform. And we are, in fact, keeping that promise to the electorate before the next elections, whenever they are called, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, we know that the NEP, the National Employment Program, is one of the most talked about of all of the social programs. And 20 years from now, when the history of Dominica will be written, Madam Speaker, when most of us will be long gone, the historians will look back, Madam Speaker, and they will say that this is one of the most impactful social programs, not only implemented by this government in its tenure, but one of the most socially impactful programs ever implemented in the history of Dominica, Madam Speaker. That is clear and unequivocal. I don't think that any member of this House can stand there and say that the National Employment, Employment Program have not achieved its intended purpose, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, right now we have about 2,000 persons employed under the National Employment Program. Persons who, are, who would have otherwise have been at home, Madam Speaker. We came to the, to the Honorable House last year for this budget, and we budgeted about $6 million for the fiscal year. And we have exceeded that to the point where, at the end of the fiscal year, the price tag for the National Employment Program will be in the region of about $11.5 to $12 million, Madam Speaker keeping persons who, are, who would have otherwise have been unemployed in a stable job and giving them a source of employment. And we are very proud as a government of the achievements that we have made under the National Employment Program. I mean, I, I don't want to take up too much time to go into the program, but one of the more notable aspects of the program, Madam Speaker, is the cleanup and beautification aspect of the program. And in every community that you travel around Dominica, you can see the impact of the cleanup and beautification program, Mr. Speaker. And I, I would like to take this opportunity to congratulate all of the interns who continue to do a great job at beautification of our various communities. Because after all, tourism is one of our leading generators of foreign exchange, Madam Speaker. And the entire atmosphere, the entire environment, Madam Speaker, has to be conducive to tourism. It is part of our tourism product. And a, cleanly, a, a clean environment, Madam Speaker, lends itself to a robust tourism uh, product. And that is what we push. And I must say our interns are assisting tremendously in achieving the Nature Island brand, which we speak about. Madam Speaker, and I congratulate all of the interns for a fabulous job that they continue. And we have other interns uh, throughout the, the public service and even the private sector, Madam Speaker. Government is, in fact, by the payment of stipends to persons who are attached to private sector institutions. The price tag on that is about half of the expenditure of the National Employment Program, which is in the region of about $6 million. That is, in fact, monies that government is making available to the private sector through the provision of interns 
in their businesses. And we have also come up with the innovative um, idea of contributing 50-50. So some of the employers contribute 50% of the stipend of those interns, and we in turn contribute another 50% of the stipend of the interns. And we are very happy because of the comments and remarks that we have been getting generally from the private sector that our interns continue to perform and to perform admirably at their various points of attachments. And we're very happy for that, Mr. Speaker. Madam Speaker, another area that have generated a lot of controversy by uh, various quarters, especially in the opposition, Madam Speaker, is the public support program, AKA the Red Clinic. But I will say that I will always stand in defense of the public support program. Because the public support program have reached persons all over Dominica in various aspects of requests that we have received. And some of those requests are requests that need to be responded to urgently. We cannot wait for the government wheels to spin as they normally do, because persons who require urgent medical attention, and some of that medical attention is required overseas, and that is where government comes in as a rapid response system. And we have, in fact, saved lives by the provisions of, 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 of thousands of dollars that are needed on the spot, Madam Speaker, to fly persons out for urgent medical attention. And, and, and a host of uh, various uh, programs that we continue to support all over Dominica through the public support program. So I will always support the public support program Madam Speaker, I, I will say that the public support, support program have done tremendous good for persons all over Dominica in various walks of life. Because no matter how much money you have, Madam Speaker, no matter how rich you are and how you feel your bank account is, 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 is a healthy state, one little incident, one urgent incident, especially a health situation, can make you a pauper in a day, Madam Speaker, depending on the, the, the level of expenses that you have to make urgently. And it is the public support program, by and large, that have helped out and have, like I said, have saved lives in that respect. And we want to commend the program and the, 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 the innovation of the program. And we hope, Madam Speaker, that programs like the Citizenship by Investment program will continue, notwithstanding the, the detrimental actions of the leader of the opposition by damaging the program on the 1st of January. Madam well, Speaker, point of order. Yeah, yeah. Point, about, yeah. point, point of order, Madam Speaker. Yeah, yeah. The member, the minister, is imputing improper motives. I ask him to withdraw the statement. Uh, Madam Speaker, I will withdraw the statement and move on, Madam Speaker. I will withdraw the statement. Madam Speaker, the, the, the interview with CBS is on public record, so I would not want to go into it any further, Madam Speaker. I think the population knows what I'm alluding to. But, Madam Speaker, what I'm saying is it is programs like the Citizenship by Investment program that allows us to generate the necessary resources to keep all of those social programs that we have in place afloat. That is all that I'm saying, Madam Speaker. And any statement, interview, or interaction gets to work, get towards the damaging of that program, Madam Speaker, has to be condemned, not only in this honorable house, but by every single Dominican. That's, that's the point that I want to make, Madam Speaker. And Madam Speaker, I want to, in moving on, I want to commend the government. Because, you know, we all in the Caribbean are one family, Madam Speaker. Today, it is Dominica because of Tropical Storm Erica. Tomorrow, it is somebody else. So when we can, we must always lend a helping hand to our brothers in need. And I believe that that is a great example of brotherhood and camaraderie that exists in the region. And I want to con commend the government. I myself be part of the government, but I want to commend the government. And I think that that is something that this honorable, entire honorable house should do for the hand of assistance 
that we have outstretched to our brothers and sisters in places like Haiti and the Bahamas. Because we have, we have Haitians here among us who, who, who live and work and earn a living among us. And I will tell you, Madam Speaker, and I will say it in public, that the success that we have been achieving at the multipurpose pack house with our fresh produce export in, is, 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 is greatly, in large part, is assisted by the production of fresh uh, 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 produce from the Haitian community in Dominica. And I want to commend them to that. So when I see you know, that, that we, can, we can reach out to our brothers and sisters in Haiti and in the Bahamas in their time of need, I, St. Vincent, when we had tropical storm, Erica, St. Vincent came to our assistance by the provision of four Bailey bridges. And I drive from Rosa to Portsmouth every day, Madam Speaker, and I have to cross uh, three of those Bailey bridges to get to work. So when I see that we can in turn extend a hand of help and assistance to St. Vincent, one in um, Point Wrong, one in um, Mero, Madam Speaker, one in Batterley, it's three Bailey bridges. So, Madam Speaker, when I see that we can extend a hand of friendship, Madam Speaker, to our brothers and sisters in St. Vincent who came to our assistance, I must stand and support this initiative and stand and commend the government for the great job that we continue to do, Madam Speaker. And, and, and Madam Speaker, I want to come back to the Citizenship by Investment program. Because every single Dominican must own that program. Every single Dominican must embrace that program. Because this world is a hard place right now. It's not easy. Our traditional friends, Madam Speaker, are experiencing their own challenges and cannot come to our assistance in the way that they would have normally done in the past. And so we have to now resort to innovative ideas like the Citizenship by Investment program to continue to raise the necessary revenues, not only for wet days, but for the present, Madam Speaker, to continue the socioeconomic advancement of all of our people. So I'm very happy and to, to, to stand here, Madam Speaker, and support all of those initiatives really being made possible by the Citizenship by Investment program. And Madam Speaker, when people question the credibility of that program, here is the evidence in black and white that they need. Money is being spent on the due diligence process to pay for firms around the world to do the due diligence, the necessary due diligence to ensure that our applicants are bona fide, Madam Speaker. And this government have done all within its power, Madam Speaker, to ensure that we have a foolproof program. And like everything else in the world, nothing is perfect. You will have persons falling through the cracks from time to time. But by and large, the success that we now are experiencing and enjoying in the Citizenship by Investment program is in part, Madam Speaker, and wholly due to the, 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 the systems that we have put in place and serious monies being spent on that, I mean, we have we had to spend millions to promote the program. The Prime Minister had to leave Dominica and go overseas. I think he, he said in one of the town meetings, seven cities in five days to correct the damage done to the program by the irresponsible behavior of some of us out there, Madam Speaker. Irresponsible behavior by some of us in there. And history, history will record the persons who were against the citizenship by investment program. History will not judge you kindly, Madam Speaker. When we see washrooms being done for 60 and 70 year olds, Madam Speaker, when we see persons who have worked hard in this country as farmers, as fishermen, Madam Speaker, as, as, as midwives, when hospitals couldn't be reached in, in times of emergency, Madam Speaker, and the government has a program to grant these people a non-pension grant in their old age. But I say, can anybody stand in this honorable house and object to those initiatives, Madam Speaker? Can anybody stand here and object to the supplementary appropriation being put forward? Madam Speaker, the Bible tells us that God smiles on a person who takes care of the poor, Madam Speaker. When you lend to the poor, 
you lend to God, Madam Speaker. And that is what this government is doing. As our economic fortunes continue to show more and more signs of health, Madam Speaker, and getting better, Madam Speaker, it's not to say times are rosy. It's not to say we have a largesse, you know, Madam Speaker. It's not to say we have oil like some of our neighbors, or we have minerals, or we have gold. No. We are just able through discipline and tenacity, Madam Speaker, to be able to run the Citizenship by Investment program to make it a success, Madam Speaker. And we are seeing the benefits of the program. So I, I am in full support of any investment we make to make the program stronger. I have to stand there. I'm duty bound to stand there because my constituency is benefiting from it. Madam Speaker, we have done about 120 washrooms so far in the Postma constituency, and we have about 70 more to do to eradicate pit latrines in the postal constituency by the end of the year, Madam Speaker. And I'm, I'm very happy. When I visit those families who have, we have built washrooms for, and I see the, 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 the fine work being done by some of our tradesmen in the postal constituency, I must commend them. And I must say to all the tradesmen around Dominica, when you go to the residences of these people and you are building the washrooms, do a great job. Do a job as if you were building a washroom in a hotel. Because this is government money being spent on people who deserve it, who need it, ma ma Mr. Madam Speaker. And we have to ensure that we do a proper job for the citizens of the country, Madam, Madam Speaker. I can speak about trade, Mr. Speaker, but, but I am talking on the supplementary appropriation. That is what we are talking about. That is what we are talking about, Mr. Speaker, the supplementary appropriation. I want to say thanks again on behalf of the St. John's Academy for the funds um, given to them, $100,000 for operational expenses. Madam Speaker, everybody knows that I'm a devout Catholic. I don't think um, that is any secret. And when I see uh, monies being spent on the St. John's Academy and one of the newest secondary schools in Dominica, trying to, to, to because you know in the, in the formative years of any institution is always very difficult and funds very difficult to come by for a private institution like that. And I want to commend the government and the Ministry of Finance for, and the Ministry of Education also, for cradling this young um, um, educational institution in its formative years. They've been doing some great work, not only in, in academics, but also in uh, extracurricular activities. They won a number of competitions so far in, in, the, um, in, in, in the cultural competitions that we have had. They've been representing very well in sports, in the athletics they meet at Independence. And I really would like to commend the St. John's Academy for the great work that they continue to do and to promise them that we will continue to support them in their endeavors to educate our, our children, uh, Madam Speaker. So, Madam Speaker, I, I think that, you know, when we have the supplementary appropriation, although the monies have been spent already, but it is incumbent upon us as the House of Assembly, as Parliament, to show support for monies well spent. And in the post of constituency, we, 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 we recognize that we had a garbage problem for the longest while. Mr. Speaker, because unlike the Prime Minister always admonishes the entire population, the government can help, but we have to appeal to the consciousness of our people as far as garbage management is concerned. And no matter how many trucks we buy, yes, we are happy for the investment of the trucks given to the Postman constituency, a dump truck and a tipper truck to assist in garbage collection, but our people, our citizens of this country have a responsibility to manage their, 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 their garbage. They, they, there's, there's, there's 60 or 70 percent of what is sent to the landfill is a biodegradable product. It's our, 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 our peel from our dashing and our bananas and our food peel and our fruits, which can be kept at home for composting. I myself, at my own home, Madam Speaker, I practice composting. We, we, we separate our waste, so everything that is biodegradable goes into a separate bin and it's taken up to, up to Hampstead on the weekends where we have a composting operations and those things do not find their way into the landfill. Madam Speaker, and I believe that every Dominican in our own little simple way 
in our own kitchen when we prepare our meals can practice some form of composting on a lower level so that we can reduce the amount of waste that goes into the landfill and perhaps extend the life of the landfill. So we're very happy for the trucks that we have received, $170,000 for dump trucks in the Portsmouth constituency. And I think the next stage that we have to take it to in the entire constituency is to get our residents and our constituents to practice composting, practice separation of the waste. So cans and bottles and tins do not necessarily have to be mixed with biodegradable products that can uh, be kept at home to be composted. So I, I really want to say that this is money is well spent. And Postmouth is one of the uh, leading tourism areas in Dominica right now. And with the hotels to come there, the, the Moroccan hotel being completed, the Kapinski again being completed, um, Madam Speaker, and the Silver Beach um, nearing uh, uh, commencement. It is, it is important that our citizens recognize the importance of tourism and really continue to act consciously in the management of our solid waste in that area, uh, Madam Speaker. So I'm very happy for that. Madam Speaker, I, I want to also uh, really mention the support being given to carnivals around Dominica. Although this is a sort of uh, controversial area, also because um, there are certain persons uh, who think that um, everybody must come into, into the capital city for carnival. But I believe all of the indigenous forms of carnival, like the sensei, like the um, dakis, like the band movie from Koliho, a lot of the indigenous forms and the traditional forms of carnival are being preserved in the rural areas. And so when you support the rural carnivals, you support the, 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 the development and, and, and the continuation of our culture and our heritage by keeping those traditional forms of carnival alive. Like I said, the sensei, the, the, the band movie from Kolihu, you know, so those money is being given. And, and, and most of the big sponsors for carnival other than the government, the private sector sponsors, they do not really reach out to persons in the rural areas. The, the, the funding is concentrated around the capital. And, and I am not criticizing that because there is a, a, a spectacle that has to be created for tourism purposes in the capital. So, I mean, there, there's divergence of views on that issue, and I'm not going into it. I just want to simply make the point that money is being invested in the development of rural carnivals is in fact money is well spent. And I want to commend the government for that. Can Madam I Speaker. ask the member please to contain himself? We've been going so well. There comes the member, usual um, asides. You can make a size, but they shouldn't be heard by the, the, the stenographers. Can you contain yourself, please? Try your best. Madam Speaker, before I end, a program that I must make mention of um, before I sit, Madam Speaker, is the Small Business Development pro Program. And the Small Business Development Program have touched every single constituency around Dominica. And I hope that when the members on the other side get up to speak, they will in fact commend the government for that innovative program called the Small Business Development Program. Because a lot of a country's economic base, Madam Speaker, is really, is really platformed on small businesses. And in Dominica, we do not have any large corporations or any big conglomerates. It is the ordinary man with his, the mom and pop operations that in fact continue to do the operation to generate revenue, to create employment, I mean, enterprise, Madam Speaker, and, and really I have seen the impact of small business development in the Portsmouth constituency. And I believe that that is a program we have to continue. We certainly have to continue this program. And so before I end, all I can add to what I have said is, Madam Speaker, merci Bodie for CIP. Thank you very much. Thank you, God, for the citizenship by investment program. Thank you, Madam Madam Speaker, I move that the House be suspended until 3 p.m., sir. Seconded, Madam Speaker. It has been moved and suspended. It has been moved and seconded. 
that this honorable house be suspended until 3 p.m. this afternoon. Those in favor? Aye. Those against? The ayes have it. This honorable house stands suspended until 3 p.m. this afternoon. <laughs>